Ever tried a super hyped K-Beauty product only to decide it's a total dud or just not right for your skin? Seriously frustrating, which is why today I'm sharing a list of hyped K-Beauty products that I'm just not feeling. Welcome to The Korean Beauty Show, where we're talking all things Korean skincare, makeup and more. If you want to learn about the hottest trending products and ingredients straight from South Korea, then this is the podcast for you. Each week, we'll be diving in to take a look at the latest trends, as well as all the tips and tricks you need to perfect your K-beauty routine. I'm your host, Lauren Lee, professional K-beauty expert and founder of Korean beauty platform Style Story. Today's episode is brought to you by Style Story, your online destination for all things K-beauty. Shop, explore, and discover the world of K-beauty online at stylestory.com.au. Guys, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Korean Beauty Show podcast. So this week, I thought for something a little bit different. Uh, you, If you've been around for a little while, you'll know that often on this show, we talk about lots of products and they're usually products that I absolutely love and that I recommend you guys to try as well. So, you know, like that's all well and good, but I think we all know that there are sometimes products that are just not all they're cracked up to be. And like many of you guys, I often try products that are massively hyped and I'm left scratching my head wondering why. So unlike influencers who get sent free products and they get paid to spruik, you know, other brands' products, no matter whether they like them or not, I am a business owner, which means that I pay to buy another company's products and then I have to sell those products. So if I don't like a product, I don't sell it on my site. It's as simple as that. So I find it really hard to sugarcoat my honest opinions if I don't really like a product. A product, And to be honest, I don't actually need to because nobody pays me to talk up their products. So what I thought I would do today for something a little bit different is to put together a list of products that I have purchased in the last six months that I just felt didn't really live up to their hype. That's what I'm going to do. But before I dive into today's episode, I just want to say a quick hello to all of you who are joining us for the first time. I don't want you to get the wrong idea and think that this this show is always, you know, negative about products that suck. But today's episode is going to be a little bit in that vein. So if you would like to hear about products that we absolutely love on this show and that we recommend, then please go and find some of the other episodes first. But for everyone else that has been following along for a while, you'll know that normally I keep it really, really positive and focused like that. But I put a call out on my Instagram stories a few, a little while ago, and I asked, would people be interested in a sort of overhyped K-beauty product special? And the overwhelming response was yes. So I sat down and I had a thought about it and that is what I have put together. Now, one thing I just want to say straight up front is I'm not necessarily saying that these products are terrible. I I think that will come through in my reviews, but just that I don't really understand why some of them are as popular as they are. And I'm going to proffer a controversial opinion as to why I think some of these products are always at the top of the bestsellers list and are always raved about on forums and by bloggers and influencers and things like that. But let's kick off and to start, the first product on my list is a product called Real Barrier Extreme Essence Toner. So this is the claim that the company makes about the toner. They say it is a unique combination of a lightweight, milky toner with the additional benefits of an essence. It provides intense moisture and nutrition for dry skin, and it helps protect the skin barrier by its hydrating and nourishing functions. The MLE Skin Barrier Formula aids in creating a protective layer on the surface of the skin. It also controls the amount of moisture in the skin, leaving it looking dewy and healthy. 
Whew. Okay, so there's some pretty big claims and reading that back through again, I'm looking at it going, wow, okay, if that's what they were going for, they really, really didn't get there for me. And the reason is when I first saw this product and I used it, I think I tested it out before I got it because I saw it, I've seen it around a lot and it's very hyped, the whole line is. And I saw the texture and it's really, really thick. And when I see a thick texture, the first thing I think is super hydrating. And then you read the claim by the company that says that it's super hydrating and MLE and all of these things. And I bought it and I took it home and I tried it. And I literally used up three quarters of the bottle before I just couldn't anymore because I could not believe how dry it made my skin feel after using it. The whole experience for me was just really disappointing. Basically, I saw this toner that looked really good. It was, it had this really thick texture that I thought would be super hydrating and it felt hydrating when I applied it onto the back of my hand. But no matter how many times I used it, how many different ways, what different cleansers I used beforehand, it just didn't leave my skin feeling in any way hydrated. It actually felt really, really dry after like 15 minutes if I left my skin without putting anything else on. Now, keep in mind that I do have very dry skin. And when I used it, when I started using it, it would have been back in autumn, so fall in Korea. So getting into that sort of colder weather. But I just thought for a product like that, that it would be a very different experience from what it actually was. So I would not recommend recommend this one to people with dry skin. It did nothing for my dry skin. Um, Yeah, that's basically it in a nutshell. I think if you are after a toner that looks hydrating, feels hydrating and has that thicker texture, I've had a much better experience with ISN Tree's Hyaluronic Acid Toner. So that's the one that I would recommend instead. Now, the second product on my list. This is super controversial because I know this product is everywhere, everywhere. I see it everywhere. Uh, This is I'm From's Honey Mask. So the company claims this wash off mask contains 46.44 grams precisely of natural honey to offer deep moisturization and nourishment. Real honey makes the skin supple while also providing elasticity and soothing care. The mask also effectively removes whiteheads and provides exfoliation to create the look of a clear complexion. So I was really shocked to find that they claim that it removes whiteheads because I must have totally missed that. Um, all right, this was this is my honest experience with it. I recall when the company first came out with this product, it was probably about seven years ago and they just put out the whole line and I remember we received um, products when we met with them. We were, I was in Seoul. I wasn't living in Seoul at the time but we came and we met with someone from the company and got to try out their whole line and I just remember thinking it was fine but nothing special and I very much remember the scent of this product and being like, I don't think that scent is doing it for me. But I've heard so many glowing reviews. Everyone always writes about this product on Instagram. I see photos of it everywhere. So you know what? I saw it on sale uh, at the end of last year and it was in a little pack that contained the mask and also they had... um, I guess, a silicone brush that they were they were selling with it and it was half price. So I thought, you know what? I've heard so much about this. Even though I didn't have a stellar experience the first time around with the product, let me try it again and just see if my opinion has changed in the intervening seven or so years since I last tried it. Anyway, I opened it up and once again, it really struck me. It's that same smell I remember and I just don't really like the scent. I think a lot of people say that it smells like honey to them, but to me, it really doesn't. It smells like, I don't know, something not great, something not great. I'm not going to lie. It's quite off-putting to me. It doesn't smell like honey. Um, 
B group maybe, I'm not quite sure. So I put I put it under a few other people's noses just to sanity check this time around. And the the consensus generally was, e that's not great. So look, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Smell is a very personal thing and lots of people obviously like the smell of it. So that is obviously just my opinion. But I find the scent very much impacts on my able being able to use the product well. That that honestly, it's it, that kind of a scent for me. But more than that, if I could put my opinion in a nutshell, my biggest problem with it is just that it is such an inelegant cosmetic formula. I find it to be sticky and gloopy and just a bit of a mess, honestly. I just think there are so many more elegantly formulated products out there that have really similar functions. So me personally, I just don't get it. I don't get the hype of this product. I don't understand why it is so popular given that. And the other thing I thought at the end of having tried it, and look, this time I gave it a pretty good whack. Like I got through half the bottle of it. So I have honestly given it my, my, full efforts <laughs> because I didn't want to be biased in my review, but the results for me are just lackluster as well. Like while I'm wearing it, it sits there and it feels heavy and like it's clogging my pores until it comes time to take it off. Removing it, I found to be a little bit of a pain. I find it requires a lot of tugging at my skin, which is not great. Uh, and even using the silicon brush that they've provided didn't really affect the amount of tugging or pulling that I had to do to get it off. I, d- I didn't find that it removed whiteheads unless maybe you dug the silicone sort of brush into your skin to like scoop them out, which is not the way that I treat my whiteheads. So I don't know. It didn't, it, I have been using it throughout winter and admittedly winter in Seoul is very much on the extreme end. So it's not like winter where I came from and winters in Australia, which are fairly mild, like in Seoul, it can get down to like minus 24 degrees Celsius here. So with that in mind, I just didn't find it that it gave me more than about half an hour's worth of hydration for my skin in winter. So all in all, all in all, it just doesn't live up to the hype for me in a nutshell. That is my personal opinion. I know that many, many people disagree with me, but for me, I find it to be an overhyped product. I have a strong suspicion that the reason it is so hyped is because there are so many YouTubers and bloggers that promote it. I know that this is one of those brands that people make up sets for and they have like such and such as set that has like all of these products in it. So I have a feeling that that has more to do with the success of the product rather than the formulation. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my opinion is just totally, you know, left a field and it is actually appealing to a lot of people. But for me personally, I don't get it. I don't get it. I think if you're after a thick mask that will actually hydrate your skin without any of the mess, iUnique's Propolis Sleeping Mask is a very decent option. So that is just, I'm not one for products that are unnecessarily fiddly and fussy. And for me, that one just is. Um, So yeah, unpopular opinion potentially. But look, I gave it my best shot. That is not the first time I've tried it seven years apart and it just doesn't do it for me. Um, Sorry. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. (laughs) Okay. The next product on my list is Sioris's Cleanse Me Softly Milk Cleanser. So the company claims that it is, it has fresh and organic ingredients of the stars of this soothing milk cleanser makeup remover. All of the natural ingredients are sourced in Korea, harvested in peak season for optimal freshness and effectiveness. It contains no parabens, artificial fragrance, additives, or harmful chemicals. Again, query what they supposedly are. But anyway, vegan and cruelty-free. It is great for all skin types, especially those with dry, dehydrated skin. Okay, so this was my experience with it. It works fine. It works totally fine. It will get your makeup off. It doesn't dry out my skin. It works totally fine, but... It is an unscented product. So obviously the company, even with that that introduction, the way they're setting up the company, they're really going for this clean beauty angle, obviously. And for me, 
The smell of the natural ingredients that are completely uncovered by any fragrance is just very off-putting. It is not something that makes me look forward to using it. Um, And to be honest, I personally don't have a problem with products that have a slight fragrance in them. And that is particularly the case when it comes to cleansers because they're just really not on your skin for very long. So for me, I just found this one was a chore to use because the smell, it's a milk cleanser. And I don't know if milk in the name made me think of like off milk when I was putting it on my face, but it just really wasn't an appealing smell in any way. And it's not because they have put a fragrance that smells bad into the cleanser. That's not what this is. It's just that is what the raw ingredients that they're using smell like without anything covering them. And this is the big problem in general with unfragranced products. I know, uh, you know, fragrance free and essential oil free is a really, really big trend at the moment. But the truth is that most people won't tell you most of the time, the only kind of products that get made fragrance free are the ones that don't stink to the high heaven because many great ingredients in skincare products, unfortunately stink pretty badly. So when a company is going for completely fragrance-free products, they're either sticking to stuff that smells okay-ish naturally, or they're going to have products that just don't smell that great. Like there's no way around that. Now, if you have an actual fragrance allergy, or you cannot take any fragrance at all in your cosmetics, then this cleanser would probably be perfect for you. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that this is a bad product at all. In fact, it does the job just fine. But I think for a lot of people, the experience of using skincare products comes down to more than just the performance of the product itself. And this is not the first cleanser or the first product I've tried from a K-beauty brand that is trying to do completely unscented. And I can say pretty much without exception that all of the unscented products that I've tried are just really hard to get excited about. They're hard to get excited about using because there is no experience of using the product. It's literally just performing that basic function of cleansing or toning or, you know, putting a serum on your face, but without anything to look forward to. And I get why companies do that because there are genuinely some people, very, very small percentage of the general population that have a fragrance allergy, maybe as small as 5%. So for those people and for people that have a skin condition like dermatitis or eczema, it is important that they're using fragrance-free products. But for the vast majority of people that are buying and using skincare, it is just not necessary. So... I know there's a huge push and, you know, if you see in the comments sections on many brands Instagram pages these days it will be please release a fragrant free ver- a fragrance free version why does this have fragrance in it and I know why this is occurring. I know that there are a couple of bloggers out there that are, and YouTubers that are really, really passionate about no fragrance. And that's fine if they're the kind of people that can't take any fragrance in their products at all, like fair call. But for the vast majority of people, fragrance allergy is not something that they're going to need to worry about. So it's a different story if you just don't happen to like the fragrance that the company has used, but completely unscented products, they generally don't smell that great. So that is my, I guess, thoughts in a nutshell about you know, completely natural products. They sound great in theory, but the reality of using a lot of them is just not ideal. So I am happy to stick to my cleansing balms instead of this one. Um, yeah, that's it. That's my review of Sioris's Cleanse Me Softly Milk Cleanser. For me, I don't really understand the hype. Um, I'm assuming that the people that are using it maybe do have a fragrance allergy and that's why they really like it. In which case, yeah, I, I totally understand that. The next product on my list is super controversial. <laughs> so this is the Purito sunscreen uh, that has been at the center of a testing scandal after tests that were performed on the Centella Green Level Unscented Sun SPF 50 plus, that's the official name, found that it wasn't in fact SPF 50 plus at all. The SPF levels were about four times less than the advertised levels. So apparently 
In vitro and in vivo tests were conducted by two independent European labs, and they determined that the sunscreen's SPF was in fact around a 19. I know I have seen some other test results from another lab in Korea, but I believe that that was still under 30, so well less than the stated level of SPF 50 plus. So look, obviously that is, uh, and this was an extremely hyped product. That's why I've included this on my list because you could not go anywhere for the last couple of years without seeing this product recommended by people uh, all over the internet. So look, this is my uh, verdict. I know that this can and does happen to Western sunscreen brands as well, and that's why I think it's a timely reminder not to always believe the hype. I know myself, I've heard murmurings about this poten- this sunscreen in particular potentially not living up to its SPF claims for two years, but many influencers and YouTubers just continued to promote it. Some of them even blatantly shut down people that dared to question whether the rating was the true rating or not. And what I think about all of this is that sometimes where there's smoke, there is fire. But more than that, I think it's really, really disappointing that the company waited so long to conduct testing on its own products, particularly with something as important as SPF. So that was the thing that shocked me the most, I think, was the company's response was basically like, well, look, we entrusted this to our lab, to the lab that made it, and then we we just basically sold it. And I just don't know that that is good enough, to be honest, when it comes to something like SPF. Now, I know that contract ma- people contract manufacture their products out to other products, but this is not a company that does not put a significant amount of marketing budget behind marketing their products. Another brand has pulled its sunscreen from sa- for sale, and that is made by the same manufacturer as the Purito sunscreen, and that is Claire's. They have also pulled their sunscreens and are looking into them. But it just seems to be a bit of a recurring theme that the companies behind these sunscreens are not conducting their own independent testing on the veracity of the SPF claims in their product, despite putting significant marketing budgets behind promoting them. And that to me is just not very impressive and makes you query the hype, you know, like why were they able to put so much money behind marketing the products, but apparently didn't bother putting any behind testing it. I just feel like with SPF, it's probably something that you want to be super, super sure that it is the right rating. And particularly when people have been querying the rating for so many years, I found that really disappointing that the company line was basically just like, yeah, that was someone else's responsibility. You know, that just doesn't sit right with me. If so many people are questioning something, it probably bears looking into, even just from a risk and liability perspective. Um, Obviously, my background is as a lawyer and as a litigator nonetheless. So for me, when I started seeing that, I know if it had been my product, I would have pulled it pretty much the next day. I have a very different risk profile, obviously, than these companies. I would not have let this co- this product circulate around in the market for this long. With people questioning, querying, doubting whether it was the right SPF claim or not, I mean, imagine how many people have been talking about this to warrant someone going out and recruiting two European labs to actually look into it. Like, that's the kind of level of discussion that has obviously been around that product. So... Yeah, look, don't always believe the hype, guys. I think that is the really important thing to take away. Obviously, there are a whole lot of other issues. Uh, You know, I think we should be able to trust what companies are telling us about their products, but it was really, really disappointing to me to hear that they had not even tried to test it or conduct any tests, and nor did they be looking into it for years until someone else knocked on their door and apparently had done the job for them. So that's just... Yeah, cautionary tale about buying into the hype, I think. 
So the next product on my list is Innisfree's Jeju Volcanic Blackout Balm. So this product, the company claims, uh, is a cleansing balm that dissolves and removes blackheads as Jeju Volcanic Clusters absorb sebum and the oil massages your skin. So this is a product that I just honestly could not work out if it did anything at all. I did not find the texture very pleasant to apply. I kind of felt like I was rubbing rubbing Vaseline into my pores, which felt a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, and then when I was washing it out, it just didn't come off very cleanly. And I don't think, I feel like my pores didn't actually look any different after using it. So this one for me was just a case of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I have great results from my double cleansing routine. It's much more efficient um, and it cuts down the amount of products that I need. So this one for me was just, I don't need it in my routine. Basically, that's my opinion in a nutshell of that one. So look, I don't know if you guys had better luck, but for me, I'll just stick to my double cleanse. (laughs) Now, the final product on my list is Huxley's Essence of Sahara Water. So this product claims to be a refreshing watery gel essence that fills and plumps skin with hydration, featuring 85% Sahara cactus extract along with peppermint and grapefruit extracts. This essence quenches and awakens skin. Sahara cactus seed oil is revered for its ability to quickly absorb into the skin while imparting lasting hydration and protecting the skin from stress and aging. So the reality for me with this product, so they call it a water, right? And that's basically what it felt like for me. It felt like I was applying water on my face. After I used it, I couldn't really see any noticeable difference or benefit other than that my face felt a bit wetter. (laughs) So even that didn't really actually last for that long. I don't feel like this prepped my skin for the next layers of my skincare. It wasn't hydrating on its own. And to be honest, I just didn't really see the point of it. It basically, it was there, but it wasn't really. So I find, especially if something says that it's going to be moisturizing and it's not, ah, that really, it gets me every time because I have really dry skin. I need that moisture. If moisture was promised and moisture is not delivered, I get a bit angry. (laughs) So that for me, it was just a bit of a dud, like it just a little bit of a dud. I personally am not a fan of the fragrance that Huxley uses in their products, but that is very much a personal thing. I know a lot of people that really like it. So for me, it was just not a fragrance I do particularly like. And Yeah, I think I had a mini of this one. So I did not go out and buy the full size after I had tried the mini just because I didn't feel like I needed to. I tried it for about two weeks and it was just not really doing anything for me. The other thing is the ingredients list on this. I just feel like, you know, it has a really, really long ingredients list, but then the product itself is claiming that it features 85% of Sahara cactus extract. So why are there so many other ingredients making up the remaining 15% of the product? It just didn't really make a lot of sense to me. Obviously, you're not getting much benefit from them. Why is the ingredients list so long? Uh, The bottle is really, really pretty. So, you know, it's got that going for it. You, your mileage may vary with this product, but for for me personally, I felt like it was just overhyped. It was overhyped for me. It did not work for my skin type. That's it. I'm not saying it's a bad product. Very pretty, but it just didn't, it did not live up to the hype in a nutshell for me. So I think if you are after a hydrating essence, then I've had a lot of luck with April B's Glutathione Hyaluronic Acid Essence. Uh, so yeah, I would recommend giving that one a try instead if you're after a really hydrating uh, essence. And that one is like a really fat essence too. So it uh, it it comes out thicker than a watery type essence. That's what I'll say. Whereas this um, Huxley one, the essence of Sahara water, it was very thin and watery. So you know, um, make of that what you will. I know some people prefer thicker, some people prefer thinner, but for me personally, I have had far better luck with Apple B's Glutathione Hyaluronic Acid Essence. 
All right. So look, that was my little uh, foray into the world of overhyped K-beauty products. I hope that you have picked up a few tips. I would love to know if you've had the opposite experience because as it, when it comes down to it, guys, skincare is very personal and what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. I think for me, these were just products that I have seen again and again popping up all over Instagram, Um, I've seen them in shops in Korea and whatnot, and I just, I wanted to try them. And for me, I was like, eh, I'm not sure why that that product is so much more popular than other products I've tried. I think that it was the point of this episode in a nutshell. I'm not trying to bash anyone. Well, look, I mean, it's the whole Purito sunscreen thing, not particularly impressive. Um, We'll leave that there. (laughs) But for the other products, I just thought, you know what, for in terms of what they claim to do, what they actually do and what else is on the market that I know and love, I don't think they lived up to their hype. So that was today's episode. That's all I've got. I'm not going to keep rabbiting on. Um, I will see you next week. And in the meantime, I would really love and appreciate a rating and a review for the show if you could possibly spare any time. And otherwise, I will see you on Style Story.